right, welcome back everybody for some members first content. Members will be able to get to see this as soon as I'm done filming and editing this on Sunday, late afternoon, probably. Uh, well, everybody else has to wait till Monday uh, to get my Wednesday watch list. Now, this is going to be the list of books that I'm keeping an eye on this upcoming new comic book Wednesday. Uh, what is it? June 28th, 2023 that we're looking at. And uh, yeah, like I said, these are going to be the new releases, new release books that I'm looking at this week. Some of which I'm going to pick up, some of which I've already pre-ordered. Some of them are just kind of tracking the pricing as uh, some pre-sales have uh, started to see some rise but we'll see how things shake out as we have a lot of stuff to go through uh today hope you're still enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel let me know what you think in the comment section please like subscribe hit the alert button so you don't miss anything keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel as we are on our way to 3k and if you want to know what books i'm keeping my eye on for this new comic book wednesday just hang on for a few seconds after the intro and i will be right back Okay, let's get right into it for this week. What do we got? Well, for our new little buzz book section, I hemmed and hawed about a few different things to put in here because I didn't know if there was really anything kind of buzzworthy. Last week, we had that Edge of Spider-Verse 3 where everybody was looking to hear Bailey's uh, backstory, and we also had Wonder Woman's new daughter getting introduced. I don't know how much that really moved the needle once the, you know, Wednesday hit, but going into Wednesday, there was a little bit of talk about it. This week's a little rougher to kind of gauge what people are kind of looking forward to for this week. So I randomly picked a couple of things that I think are a little more interesting than most to kind of cover for this segment today. The first being this Africa cover. We've been talking about this on Tales of the Dark Side a little bit, and we've been discussing the uh, Order 66 survivors and uh, some of the ones that didn't survive, etc. And that brings us to this Ala Sakura cover that we are getting this Wednesday on Dr. Afro number 33. Is it going to be a flashback? Is she going to be brought back to life? Because if you guys watched the movie and even read some comics, she did. It's pretty clear. She she got it in the back here, both in the movie and in the comic book, exactly the same way. Those troopers, I think it was Captain Bly and his crew, those troopers took her down. So maybe it's a flashback we're getting. I don't know. What we'll see, uh, but that's kind of got some talk going about what uh, you know what they're doing over in those Star Wars books these days. How how close they're adhering to canon, etc. Like what what could be taken? Who survived? I don't know. Seems like every day every day we're getting a new. Hey, well, it's another Jedi that survived Order sixty six, and I know a lot of them apparently survived, but it just seems kind of like a tired ex excuse. Like every show we're getting, there's an Order sixty six survivor on Disney Plus, I guess, but. That all said, in the comics, we'll see how this shakes out come Wednesday. Outside of this, I did hear talk that there's a new character. I don't know the name. Uh, it wasn't in the release or the little description that I was reading. But apparently, Action Comics, there's going to be a new character introduced. I'm guessing this is who the new character is because this uh, female doesn't look familiar. Uh, I think it's a female, but I'm not 100%. I'm um, just going off this one image, this one cover of Action Comics 1056. They say there's a new new character being introduced. This is an unfamiliar character to me. So this could be the cover for that character. I don't know for certain, though. So apart from the fact that they're, you know, talking up that there's a new introduction of a new character coming in action. I'm just not 100 percent. This is the one. That's all. So multiple covers on this book. Grab any that you like if you're that interested. But hey, they introduce characters every week, every week. So not every new character introduced in comics is a key. Just just isn't. I just put this here because this starts getting people talking. That's why it's in the buzz section. Much like this, Miles. Miles is getting a new suit, too. He's getting a little Tony Stark Iron Man, Iron Spider version for himself, along with a new extremist symbiote, too, for Carnage, apparently. Cletus Cassidy in this Carnage Reigns Omega. We're getting a lot of weird new suits both for symbiotes and for our spider folk. So I guess it's kind of interesting. If you're into that kind of thing, if you like the new costume, new looks, there's a couple cool covers. I do kind of like that first one right there in the middle. It's kind of a nice little uh, bright uh, image and uh, yeah, interesting look for Miles, I guess. It's definitely better than that stupid uh, like jacket look that he had because I just did not care for that one. But that all said, we'll see how this plays out come Wednesday. So again, I'm not saying that these are going to be the huge books. I'm just saying going into this week, these are things that I was reading articles about, hearing people talk about, and uh, seem to have a little bit of a little bit of buzz going to them. So 
We'll see what happens uh, once new release day actually hits. But as far as what I'm looking forward to and what I want to read on my reading list, I'm looking forward to this Detective Comics issue here. This is just an awesome cover just by itself. This is the regular uh, regular cover. I like it as it is. There are multiples on this. This is uh, action, I think, 1073, if I got my numbering right. Uh, whatever, not action, detective. Uh, detective, uh, you know. So Ram V's been doing an interesting job with this title. I've actually fallen off uh, since we reviewed it a couple of months ago. So I'm a couple issues behind, but I'm probably going to catch up and read before Wednesday so I can read this one as well when it comes out. Because like I said, I dig this cover, the whole bat, man bat kind of thing going on right now. I like it. Uh, there's a Kelly Jones B cover here. There's also a uh, another uh, cardstock cover here where we got man bat and Batman. We got a couple of more covers where we have the... Uh, you know, the Pride Month cover for DC, as well as this swimsuit edition, because, you know, it's summertime. So we got swimsuit editions coming and I'll be having some swimsuit shorts starting to hit on the weekends through July. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, it's kind of fun. But uh, that said, there are also incentives, too, for this book. There is a one in 25 uh, over here, which is kind of cool. And I also like the foil one in 50. It looks more grayscaled and uh considering the dc foil is pretty dull to begin with it might actually work with this book but we'll see the one in 50 foil actually has sold uh ahead of time there have been a few pre-sales you can see here uh some of them were thinking that the cover was going to be the kelly jones uh foil cover but that doesn't seem to be the case so that's why i see a little bit of inconsistency with some of the listings here um uh, but by and large the one in 50 is pre-selling for 40 45 75 dollars at most recent june 3rd uh 75 bucks so uh with a few out there on the market with asking prices around 50 bucks and then we got uh we got that auction for comic biz uh see where that one ends up next friday or this friday that's where this one's kind of lying so we'll see how this plays out over the week and see if it maintains being above ratio or if it dips below as most do like most usually come uh by the end of the week these dc one of 50s are like 40 35 even uh, for the one at 50. So they kind of come down. So high pre-sales doesn't necessarily mean aftermarket heat once the books hit on Wednesday, as we've seen over the last few weeks. And I think we're going to see a lot of that this week as we get into some stuff a little bit later on in this program. But far from this detective that I want to read, I'm also looking forward to what they're doing with the X books these days. I'm trying to keep up. I wasn't really a huge fan of the Sinister thing, mostly because I didn't like all the time jumps and it just got a little bit confusing and hard to track. But I'm curious about what we're getting here with uh, the fall of X. I'm going to try to keep up, going to see if I can keep pace. Uh, Heralds of Apocalypse, always fun. I always love seeing the Horsemen of Apocalypse every time. They get me every time. Like uh, he gets new uh, Horsemen or whatever. So I get interested and I want to read and find out more about them. So looks like we're getting something of that ilk, you know, this week as well. I like this cover probably a little bit best. I think this is like the B cover, but the A cover is not bad. And then there's a random stormbreakers that has nothing to do with anything i don't know what ms marvel and uh absorbing man have to do with this book and why they threw this cover on this book marvel no idea why they do such things sometimes so but i am looking forward to reading this um again with all these different little segments and things let me know the things you guys are looking forward to too in the comments let me know the books you're looking forward to read because everybody's going to get to see this by monday and we'll still be at least a day before dc and two days before everything else so tell me the books you can't wait to read and what you want to check out also because it might help us pick the books that we're going to review on the tax show on wednesday uh as far as the new comic book day reviews go so it's always helpful to know what you guys are interested in because just what i like doesn't mean it's what you guys like you know that said, tried this out last week, and it was mostly due to cover art is where I was kind of floating around, around on for the not great section checks in here. But uh, this week, what I think is not great is the fact that we are getting a dump of comics. I don't like this. Uh, Star Wars High Republic, the Dark Horse series. We are not only getting issue six, but they're also giving us issue seven. And if that's not enough, they're also just throwing issue eight at us all at once. I get it. They're trying to get the storyline done before, you know, I guess the next novel or whatever story they're going to pick up so soon elsewhere. But that doesn't mean time your stuff better. Time it better. This is ridiculous. You don't be drum dropping three comics in one week. It just, it's just ridiculous. All right, so I'm just I'm going to not read these out of spite. I'm just going to wait. And not read them this week out of spite because this is ridiculous. 
I'm still going to get them because they're Star Wars books, and I try to keep up with my Star Wars stuff, but still. This isn't great. I don't like this. Don't like it. Don't like it. Don't like it. That said, homage covers. We do have a couple homages this week. You know, I'm still, I know it can get tiresome with some of the covers they decide to do over and over and over and over again, but occasionally they surprise you, they make you smile, and they give you something. You go, you know what? That's not bad. It's not bad. This week, things that I liked. Creed. Why are we getting a Creed comic? I don't know. But we are getting a Creed comic from Boom. And I think it's kind of fun, this uh, punch out. Uh, I mean, it looks like he's punching Mike Tyson in the picture there. But I don't think that's Mike Tyson. But regardless, they're not doing an homage to the actual Mike Tyson's punch out cover here. They went with the old school punch out cover. You can tell by the exact matchup of everything there with the red border, NES, etc. Seal, the Nintendo quality seal, all of that there. I like it when they do that attention to detail. So I am looking forward to this book. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, and I might grab this one if I can find it. Uh, I might have to order it online because I don't know if uh, the shops near me are going to order this uh, because there is multiple covers for this book. I, I don't know how heavily they're going to order the Creed comic. So uh, just something to something to throw out there. I believe I did order this because, yeah, what not publishing. Yeah, I'm not super excited for all the titles that they do have, but... They do a lot of homages, like a lot, like multiples each issue for multiple books. But occasionally they hit one that makes me kind of smile a little bit. And Wesley Snipes, the exiled with the they live homage. Well, yeah, that's going to make me smile a little bit because I came here to do two things, kick some ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm almost out of bubble gum. So uh, with that said, let's move to the next one. And our last one is actually an incentive book, but it's one they've done before. But every time it's done, it always gives me pause. And I always think about getting it. And this time out, it's Darkwing Duck, number six. I believe this is a one in ten. That Akira homage. Fantastic. I still regret selling the uh, eBay exclusive Bitterroot. I had one. I bought one from eBay. It was like five or six bucks or whatever the heck it was. I think it was like six bucks with free shipping, buying it off of eBay. And I only bought the one. And then it got hot. And I sold it for like $80 and thought, I was like, oh, look at that. It just made some money. Now that's a couple hundred dollars, that book. And uh, I'm not paying that to get it back. But I kind of wish I did have it back because I did like it. And Bitterroot's a good book. But uh, every time I see this homage, I stop and I think about getting it. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if I can get this one, this one in 10. It's going to be a little tough. Might have to order it online somewhere. But uh, you never know. Never know what you might find at a shop. That said, let's move on to the next segment. And this is where things are going to get a little dicey. Later prints. Why? Well, you are guys, I already know by now, I've talked about this multiple times, my feelings on incentives on the second prints. And this week we're getting a few. We'll get to that in a second. Let's start off with the regular second printings. Uh, no thirds that I could see. I think these are all second prints this week. We got a Tales from Nottingham, number one. I think this is just like a black and white version of a cover we've already gotten before. But Mad Cave gives us a second print for this title this week. World Tree is also giving us a second print for issue two of uh, World Tree. Okay, kind of out of focus. Cop car. Okay, okay. that's fine. Uh, Batman 135 is giving us this black and white uh, second printing here. Legacy issue number 900. You know, Batman's back. So, uh, yeah, interesting, I guess. It's seven bucks, so I don't know about all that. Uh, you know, but that was, I think, the cover price on the original. So, you know, they're not really marking it up. But Marvel also is giving us a Guardians uh, issue two, second print. I kind of like this. I like the original cover for this. So this kind of a uh, grayscaled almost version, like pop to color is kind of cool. Not, not too bad. Uh, but I don't think I need it because I already got the original. But this has, does have a cool look to it. And I, I do like the Star Star Lord reflection there in the sword. Uh, and then Spider-Man 2099, that Dark Genesis series is beginning a second print uh, throughout this run. And issue three is no exception. And uh, this time... It's kind of got like a weird clip out of the book and with a lot of black border. This almost looks like an advertisement. doesn't look like an actual comic cover, but uh, it looks like an ad inside a book. But this is the second printing cover that they are giving us. So if you're interested, there you go. You get a little bit more blade and you get a little bit more of, uh, you know, what is it? I guess Carnage 2099 was in there. Uh, who was the other character that was in there? Uh, Flipside 3.0, I think, was in there. Something. I don't know. But from here, here we go. 
thank you, Marvel, for all of this nonsense. And I call this nonsense because a lot of this is unnecessary, but we are getting it anyway, starting with this. Cult of Carnage, Misery number one. Yeah, fine. I guess this sold out. I don't know. I felt like I've seen this plenty on the shelves and it's first Liz Allen as misery or whatever. Uh, I think we talked about it uh, a couple of weeks ago was in the homage section because they had these venom, the other covers, and now they're turning them into virgin versions, which ain't that great, but whatever one in 25s. And I say this because this is not the only one we'll get to the next one next, but here we go. Cult of carnage virgin cover uh, doing that other angle. But it doesn't play as well when it doesn't have the trade dress to match it. So you know it is doing the other. Like, it it's, can't do an homage and then do a virgin version of it. It kind of takes away some of the cachet it has in being an homage. Otherwise, then it just feels like an incomplete piece of art with a lot of dead space at the top of this book. That said, hey, if you want it, go ahead. I'm just, I'm not throwing money at this book personally. Especially not when we're looking at double ratio at $44 to $50. Uh for pre-orders back in May. Uh, both of those, I believe, were back in May. So those were weeks ago. Weeks ago on those pre-orders. So does that give us much of a gauge on what it's going to be this week? I don't know. But I only found one listed right now, and it wanted $56 for this 1 in 25 second printing uh, incentive. Again, it's not me buying this. I'm not buying this. I have next to no interest in this book. But I'm curious enough to want to track it because I want to know what the market's doing because as much as I might not like it, I am still a part of this market, too, and it is affecting things that I do buy. So that's why I like to follow and track how these things are playing out. And until you guys start speaking with your wallets and not start throwing money at all of these second print incentive 1 in 25s, they're not going to stop doing them. And I say that because it's not just shops ordering them. But if you keep order buying enough that the shops are going to keep ordering them and paying these exorbitant amount of prices for these things, they're going to keep doing it. Like Marvel's not printing these just for the fun. They're printing it because they're getting orders. They're getting orders because shops are selling these and they're selling them at a premium. So until you start speaking with your wallet, they're going to keep doing this. And the reason why I keep harping on this, because this is one of five, I believe, that we're getting this week from Marvel. Five. Second print, one in 25 incentives. Five. One week alone. Is that necessary? I don't think so, personally. But feel free to disagree. That said... Moving on to the next book that we probably don't need. Extreme Venomverse number one, second printing. Okay, I guess. Event book, maybe it's sold out. I still feel like I've seen these on the shelves, so we can still get the first print when we want it. But hey, second printing, there it is. Kind of like this cover. Unfortunately, nobody's going to care about this cover because they're only going to be buying it so they can get this virgin version of the other homage. This one's a little bit better. You got that like scorpion tail kind of filling some of that dead space at the top. But uh, the other one, unbalanced. That said, this is kind of in that same ballpark as the other book. Pre-sales, 45 to 62. Again, both of those way back in May. It's over a month ago. And right now, there's one listed looking for $125. And like I said, they're going to keep printing them because shops are going to keep ordering up to get these if they can get... $125 for that incentive. So I don't want, I don't know who's selling it. I'm not trying to mess with your business, but just saying, I don't like this. I don't like this in the market. So that's why I'm speaking up about it, but it's not up to me. It's up to you guys and your wallets. So if you want it, there you go. Go throw five times ratio at your second print edge of venom verse. Number one, 125 incentive. I've said so many words that mean nothing that, you should know not to go buy that. But again, it's your wallet. Do what you like with it. I get it. Don't make all the rarity uh, comments that you want. Say how hard to find these things will be because just because something's hard to find don't mean it's valuable. That's that's a misconception that people like to throw out there. Well, it's rare. They only made this. They only made that. Okay, I get it. But that alone shouldn't mean something is valuable. There should be something else apart from that. Because otherwise, every tiny, minuscule, you know, minuscule publisher out there's books should be important just because they're not printing a lot of them. But if nobody cares and nobody wants to read it and nobody wants it for any reason, that's why it. Anyway, anyway I don't want to get off track. Don't want to get off track. Let's keep going because we still have three more one in twenty-five incentives for second prints, like this. 
Amazing Spider-Man 25. Whatever happened to Mary Jane? I think that's just the backstory we get here, and we get a little bit of that her the tale of her and Paul. Another universe comes back to kids. I don't know. I feel like this is all just a preamble to uh Ms. Marvel dying in 26 as the big surprise, and then we've already seen her on covers in, in issues coming out in another month or two. So uh yeah. Great, great stories there, Marvel. That said, here's a one in twenty-five for it. Hey, and look at that. It's another I have 15 homage. Don't have enough of these. But there they are. Pre-selling for almost 100 bucks or up to 100 bucks. Uh, May 31st and June 2nd. So last couple of weeks, a couple of weeks ago. There's one listed. Five watchers. 100 bucks. It's your money. It's your money. But like I said, I'm going to watch it. But my wallet ain't coming out for this either. Nor is it coming out for this one. Avengers. Yes, we got a new Avengers title. Avengers 1. And we're getting a second print. Yay. All right. It's fine. Maybe this sold out. I don't know. Story was meh. Kind of set up. So we'll see. But there were some pretty cool incentives. One of which we are now getting a 1 in 25 virgin version of uh, this. I think it was Derek Chu did this one. I'm not positive. But 1 in 25. Second print. Sure. Uh, this one, however, surprised me in that, uh, I didn't find anything out there. Meaning I didn't find any pre-sales or anything listed right now. So who knows? Maybe nobody ordered this. Whatever. It's up to you. So I can't even yell about the price. I mean, again, you want to buy these things, you go feel free. Go ahead. I mean, cover art is it's cover art. I just, I just don't like this practice. This, they're reprints. Don't, why, why are we incentivizing reprints? Just make reprints should be made to order, like made to fill that need of people who couldn't get the first print because it sold out. That's the purpose of what the later printings are, not just so they can do shorter print run reprints and try to say, well, it's more rare, so you should want this more because it's the first, even if it's a first appearance. But I'm like, well, it's not a first appearance because it's a reprint of a first appearance. So anyway, again, agree to disagree, I guess. I just have a problem with this. Just too many of these. Too many of these. And they're just, I don't know. I don't like it. If you haven't, if it hasn't been clear, I don't like it. Danny Catch, Ghost Rider number one. Okay. Solid cover for a second print cover. But nobody's probably going to want it because they only want the incentive. Teixeira. Tex. Not bad. Classic. Uh, classic Tex, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's not a terrible cover, but. It's the fact that it's a one in twenty-five second printing is just why it's not for me. Even at sixty-two bucks, back in May, back in May, this pre-sold one copy for sixty-two bucks, and there's one listed for sixty-four. See, there's one of these. It's like pick your cover. Regular covers four bucks. The incentive is sixty-four dollars, and it is still available. Or one at least last looked yesterday, uh, it was still available. So we'll see. We will see. But I probably doubt these will end up on my top 10 and 10 this week because as we saw with some of the other ones it's not a lot of movement on these you saw what one or two copies mostly sold in may that i'm not going to have it for this week but if they do start selling like that silk and they're selling for triple ratio still even if it's only a couple of copies uh, then it is what it is but you know we'll see we'll see how these shake out i'm just getting tired getting tired i had to run through five of those five I think there's more of those than there are in the incentive section that we're going to get to after we get through the covers that I like. So once again, just like a lot of other places, these are just covers that kind of caught my eye and I'm probably going to go and pick up if I haven't ordered them already. Like Jenny Frizen's cover with Harley and Poison Ivy. It's This is just a sweet cover. Uh, I like it. I like the layout of it. I think it's good. Harley Quinn number 31 because you can't tell on the cover, you know, the image that I have here because there's no not even partial trade dress. So uh, that's what issue this is. 31 for Harley Quinn. Pretty cool. And we'll see this book again a little bit later. Another cover I thought was pretty cool is this. Uh, I think this is a uh, Gillum March on uh, Batman. The Adventures continues issue six. It just has kind of this classic look. I mean, you got the Joker in the back and then the Joker in the front with the laughing fish. I don't know. Caught my eye. So I thought it was pretty cool. Just like this Hellboy cover. Uh, just solid. I don't know. Just something about it. Just the, the hooded skeleton. And yes, that tiger looks stretched, but it still looks cool. Regardless of the, you know, 
the physical <laughs> like maybe that's kind of crazy how much that tiger stretched but it still looked cool to me so just kind of want to put it in there uh because fearful symmetry kind of fun I haven't really read many of these BRPD books. I I sh- no, I should. I grab them sometimes out of dollar bins just because with the intent to read them. But uh, there's only so many comics I could read in a week that it's just something I end up buying and never getting around to. But we'll see. Because I do like Hellboy. I do like those darker tales and the stuff that they kind of tackle there. But uh, with that said, this cover just kind of caught my eye. Just like this one. So this is also uh, Dark Horse, The Oddly Pedestrian Life of Christopher Chaos. There's multiple covers for this book. It looks like this is going to be a book uh, you know, with Tinian, I guess, partly writing some of this. I don't know. This looks like something the Dark Horse is also pushing out there with the multiple covers, like I said. But this is the one that kind of caught my eye. It has like a throwback uh, monster movie poster kind of vibe to it. So I thought that was kind of cool. Just like this next book also had a pretty cool monster vibe to it. And this Cthulhu coming at you, uh, breaking through the wall with the face tentacles. I don't know. Grim Fairy Tales, Volume 2, Number 73. Yes, a Zenoscope book. And yes, a Zenoscope cover of a book that is not a sexy girl cover. Surprise, right? This is just cool looking, right? I mean, this is good art. So I think it's I, I think it's solid. Sticking on that darker side of things. Also, another topic of you're going to see with Hidden Gems uh, tomorrow, because I got to go film that as well. It is going to be on the darker side, too. We're going to hit up with some horror stuff. But also with horror, Bryn Moore. New IDW series, just a creepy cover. I like the tr- like the whole layout of it, well balanced. I dig it. Creepy cover, it's got my attention. Along with the Frank Avia cover here, that also is uh there. I don't know, it's about vampires, I guess. It's got kind of a gray gray fire kind of feel to me here. Uh, I don't know if you guys know that book series. I listened to a couple of them. It's a little bit of a steampunky kind of vampires. I don't know. Anyway, Bryn Moore. Looks interesting. So I might ke- check this out and give this a read because, again, well, it's kind of caught my eye with these covers. I'll grab either one, if not both, when I go to the shop because uh, they look pretty good to me. Much like this David Mack cover on uh, Daredevil Echo. I dig it. Very colorful, very bright. Uh, there's another cover on here that wasn't too bad, but I decided I like this one best. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see. And also got that, you know, Demi Goblin in this tale uh, with the female Demi Goblin back. So we'll see where that's going. We also apparently got Silk out in the Wild West. Silly as that sounds, this Western type cover looks pretty cool to me. I don't know. I just something about that bold font and the, it's the outline, the background and old timey Western feel. I don't know. Kind of caught my eye. I kind of like it. Kind of like it. And there is an incentive for this book we will also get into in a second as we're going to hit up incentives now. And like I said, you may see less incentives here than second print incentives. But I'm not sure. We'll see. I can't remember what I put in here. Uh, but we do start with a 1 in 10. The final issue of Saturday Morning Cartoons, Avengers and Dungeons and Dragons, the RI cover for issue 4. Yeah. Uh, I got issue 2 and 3 behind me here. And I also got issue 1 around as well. That's the one that really hit. And then everybody started buying up the other one, issue 2, thinking it was going to hit like number 1. But it never did. And then 3 and even 4, I think, are getting ignored or forgotten about. But maybe one day, if Dungeons and Dragons catches on again, these will see some interest because yeah, it's still pretty cheap. Copy sold for eight bucks. So under ratio, a copy sold for asking prices are a little above around like 15, 17 for a one in 10. It's not terrible. Uh, like I said, I got one of these uh, coming my way because, well, I like Dungeons and Dragons. So, uh, and I like the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. So I definitely was getting this. I don't know. That said, Harley. I also mentioned we were seeing Harley again, and there are some incentives for that Harley 31. Starting off with this one, I guess, is is this Dare Chu as well? It's old school classic Harley in the Harley Quinn outfit. I like it. I like it. Uh, I think it's very bright, shiny. I don't know. Just kind of has like a classic kind of feel to it. I like it. Pre-sales are right around ratio. Uh, you got 20 bucks, 20 bucks, up to 30 bucks. So for this one in 25, that's not terrible. Asking prices are right around that 25 to $30 kind of range, as you can see there as well. We'll see how this one plays out. Harley Quinn incentives sometimes can see some uh, movement on the aftermarket, but a lot of times they really just hover around that ratio mark because I think enough get ordered that the market gets satisfied. Uh, so unless this becomes a uh, must have for a lot of collectors, this will probably linger around that same uh, ratio mark. But I 
think I might have ordered one of these because, like I said, it caught my eye, and uh, I, I was in. I was into it for uh, right around ratio personally because I like it. It's one in fifty kind of caught my eye too, uh, just because it's different. Uh, it's just a different look. I mean, you got a whole kind of cityscape. It's very busy. It's got like a Jeff Darrow kind of vibe to it, uh, and you got this giant mech uh mech harley there i guess going right at it wayne like there's a lot of little easter egg type of di things hidden in the in that cityscape but this is the one in 50 for that same harley issue so pre-sales have been under the one in 50 ratio look 35 45 uh granted that one was just a couple days ago june 24th oh just yesterday actually 35 bucks but before it was back in april one of these sold for uh asking prices again 35 40 65 dollars so for one in 50 it's a little bit above a little bit below uh there's a range on this one so it'll probably again still settle in under ratio because while it's different i don't know if it's for everybody but i think it's kind of cool but we'll see i'm probably just probably not going to be shelling out ratio for this personally i think i like the other one a little bit better the classic look over this you know different take but I did order this next book because when I did see the uh, the image for it, I was like, that's pretty cool. And I know there's a lot of bubblegum co collectors as well. So we got a bubblegum cover here with silk number two. Very pink. A lot going on there with the colors. should be very bright and vibrant. I think it's going to look nice in hand. So as I said, I ordered one. Um, I forget where I ordered it from, but I ordered it from somewhere. Probably right around that ratio mark. And uh, that's kind of where I think it is right now. Oh, it might be a little bit above. 45 there is a best offer on 30 and there's a 38 dollars sale uh june 1st june 24th on those other two sales so yeah we'll see where it goes asking prices are a little bit higher than ratio right now uh 31 but that's out of the uk so that's actually a 50 dollars purchase if you're in the in the uh, united states and then there's a 50 53 dollars one out of canada with another 15 dollars tacked on and then an 85 dollars one listed there too so double ratio plus already on this one so we'll see if it maintains that. Uh, but like I said, I'm glad I ordered one early. But I do know there's a lot of things going for this. Uh, still people looking towards Silk. There's supposedly a show coming to Amazon. Bubblegum cover incentive on a lesser order title. I mean, there's not a ton of uh, Silk regular issues being sold these days. I mean, this is another mini. She can't even maintain an ongoing right now. They just keep doing minis, I guess. This is a five-issue mini uh, for this current series. So we'll see how it plays out. But. I kind of liked it, so that's why I got one. Uh, a couple books left. She-Hulk. She-Hulk 14. Get a little bit more of that scoundrel bad guy. Uh, Derek Chu's, I guess, the busiest guy uh, in comics right now. Just so many covers. Uh, and they're pretty solid, a lot of these two. They kind of just still catch my eye. I know that it's that kind of computer art sheen. Uh, a little too polished for some people's tastes, but in that art germ kind of way. I, I kind of like it. And uh, this is a one in 50. There is a cheaper option for She-Hulk 14 where you can get the trade dress. Uh, you can see there's a little example. I don't know if that's how the trade dress is actually going to look, but, you know, there will be a trade dress version for cover. So you can always get that option, too, if you don't want to pay one in 50 prices, because right now, one in 50 prices are pretty high. 100 bucks, 90 bucks, 60 bucks back in May. Uh, those other two were back in June, so at least more recent. But that May one for 60 was on the cheaper side. So it's gotten a little more expensive as we've gotten closer to release day. And right now copies listed on uh, eBay right now, there's one for hundred bucks. It's got seven watchers marked as their last one. So I guess they had multiples. Then there's 150 and another one out of Canada. Uh, that's over a hundred bucks as well. So double ratio plus on this one right now. We'll see how this plays out once Wednesday hits, but something to keep an eye on as well as our last book. I think it's our last one for the week. We're getting up there with the incentive ratios. It's another 1 in 100 for World Tree. Uh, I think it's clear. Uh, somebody, I forget who mentioned it, that, yeah, they're doing other Tinian comics homages on these 1 in 100s. So I think we had a Something is Killing the Children or A Nice House on the Lake, I think, already. I forget, but here we go. Department of Truth homage on uh, World Tree number three, 1 in 100. Copies sold already, pre-sold, 150, 160, 140, June 11th, 12th, and the 22nd. So within the last 10 days or so are uh, those three sales. So pretty recent. Uh, seems like there's interest all above that 1 to 100 ratio mark. And right now, there weren't any listed when I checked. That'll change 
as the week gets closer to actual release day. But as of right now, nothing listed. So that's what I got for you. Uh, so with that, let me know what books you're looking forward to. Let me know if you think I'm dead wrong about these one in 25 second print incentives, but I just don't like them. I just don't like them. I don't know. Just give me better cover art. Like the covers aren't bad. Just give me some of the cover art on the regular issues and just keep the regular issues coming. Don't need to do these second prints. You're trying to push to get incentives. I don't know. That said, thanks for the support and stopping by again, members, you will get to see this as soon as I'm done filming all this stuff and get it edited and get it out to you uh, ahead of star Wars later tonight. Uh, everybody else will see this Monday afternoon and uh, stick around and come back later for hidden gems Monday night. And then I'll have a chasing ghosts 100th episode on Tuesday. So 100 episodes of chasing ghosts. I can't believe I've done a hundred of those already, but here we are. I think, hidden gems is up to 60 so some of these titles have been doing over a year can't believe i maintained this schedule and done this many shows this consistently for this amount of time but hopefully you're still enjoying that content and hopefully you're still liking what we've got going on here in the channel please let me know what you think in the comment section keep telling your friends we can keep growing it and i will be back soon with some more content all right later